July 11th, 2014. A Reddit user named Lewis Green receives a message out of the blue from a user called Old Root. The text reads, This is the beginning. Those who are pure will see what hides in the darkness. Attached to the message was an imager link. Here is that image. It's extremely dark, and it's hard to tell what's going on. However, by brightening the image, we can see that it's a screenshot from Minecraft. A lone character stands in a forest, watching us from afar. But if we look closer at the image, we see that there's something else, a link. Upon following the link, we discover a very strange sound file called It Has Begun. Take a listen. <laughs> It's bizarre, otherworldly, even disturbing. There's no obvious meaning to this, yet this audio file holds a secret. There's a tool called a spectrogram that allows us to view the frequencies of an audio file visually. The spectrogram is the key to solving it has begun. By putting the file into a spectrogram, we see text embedded within, Silent Raven. If we explore the sound clouds some more, we discover a second audio file called Old Root. Take a listen. Once again, this sound is distinctly unnatural. The spectrogram shows us a link to another image. This time, it's a Minecraft figure in a foggy void with the words, the raven is watching. A Reddit user named Toxic Popcorn sent a message to Old Root asking for more information. He responded with a link to another image. This one is incredibly dark, but by adjusting the color levels, we again see that same mysterious Minecraft figure. Further investigation of the image revealed text hidden in the static. Although it's hard to read, Redditors determined that the text says oldrootblog.tumblr.com. It's another link. The investigators followed the link and found a password-protected page. Upon entering the code Silent Raven, the blog linked to a new image. It was that same shadowy figure in an underground tunnel. By brightening the image, we see the words, We are the answer, directly above the figure's head. But this image held another secret. Next to the figure, there are some pixels that are suspiciously miscolored in some type of pattern, Morse code. By putting the dashes and dots into a translator, it reads, Titanled. What could this mean? Was it some sort of code? Well, it turned out that the Morse code was embedded in the negative space. By reading the white area, the code translated to old root. Users quickly discovered that other images also had the same Morse code. This was clearly some type of signature or calling card of old root. Soon thereafter, Lewis Green received another message from Old Root. The message read, Quote the Raven, Nevermore. Attached was another image, again of that same mysterious figure. Brightening the image revealed a few more interesting characteristics. First, the Morse code signature. Above the head was a seemingly jumbled mess of letters. It was determined that this was a Caesar cipher. A Caesar cipher is pretty easy to understand. Simply take two rows of the alphabet and shift one of them over, looping around to the other side. To encrypt the message, use a letter from the top row and write down the corresponding letter from the bottom row. Decoding is done in reverse. Take an encrypted letter, find its place in the bottom row, and write the decoded plain text. The key to the Caesar cipher is knowing the shift. How far was the second alphabet shifted relative to the first? The mysterious text appeared as though it could be a Caesar cipher, but how could it be decoded? Well, the nice thing about the English language is that there are only 26 letters, which means that the Caesar cipher only has 26 possible shifts. It was trivial to try all 26, and in doing so, the text was decoded. The text was now, we are waiting. But that wasn't all to this image. There was also some jumbled letters and numbers at the character's feet, which were identified as belonging to an imager link to another picture. When this picture was brightened, it showed the word Raven, with text behind it. Users quickly realized that this was a reference to The Raven, a famous poem published in 1845 by Edgar Allan Poe, and the text in the image was text from that poem. Well, almost. There were some things that were strange about it. Typos, incorrect words, the image did not align with the poem as expected. Looking at these changes together revealed the following words. The hidden truth is. The hidden truth is what? Nobody really knew. But it was becoming clear that there was a rich mystery. It was going somewhere, but where? What was the purpose of all this? 
And then the trail went cold, as investigations into a potential Minecraft server called Nightmarecraft proved to be fruitless. So the team waited, hoping for more information to come forward. They didn't have to wait long. A new image was posted later that day. Yet the Minecraft figure was mysteriously absent, instead replaced by very blurred text. It was found that these were 8-bit numbers. This aligned pretty conveniently with the ASCII standard, which is one of the ways that computers store characters. Each 8-bit sequence corresponded to a single character. So it was simple, just write down the numbers, put them in an ASCII decoder, and find the next clue. The issue was that some of the numbers were so blurred as to be almost totally unrecognizable. Yet a pattern was beginning to emerge. All of the images so far had been hosted on Imager. And Imager images always have a 7-character code in the link, which identifies the image. So despite the extreme blurriness, it was clear that there were 7 rows, which meant 7 characters. Perfect for another Imager link. A user named Crate Muncher wrote a script to brute force the unknown digits, checking to see if each possibility was valid. And finally, they found it. The link to a new image. This picture has the same shadowy figure, although this time with some characters on the side. Once again, there were seven groups, so there had to be some way to convert it into an imager link. But these weren't binary numbers, so could it still be ASCII? How could they even be numbers? They had letters too. The answer to this is a bit technical, but bear with me. Different numbering systems have a special property called a base. This represents how many unique digits there are. For example, we're used to base 10, or decimal numbering system. That means that there are 10 different possible symbols we can use. But other bases also exist. One example we just saw is base 2, or binary. In this system, there are only two symbols we can use, 0 and 1. Both bases have the same numbers. This number is equal to 13, whether we write it in decimal or binary. The value is the same, it's just a different way to notate it. There are more than just these two numbering systems. In fact, you can go as high as you want, so long as you can find enough symbols. The third most common is base 16, or hexadecimal. In this version, we need more symbols than just 10, so we start using letters as well. Again, it's just as expressive as the other two, it just looks different. In this case, the number 13 would be written D. It turned out that the characters on this image were actually hexadecimal numbers, and could be converted to ASCII. Doing so led to another imager link. This image shows the same figure and some sort of underground passageway. Brightening the image gives us a better view. On the right side, there's text which says, we are the answer. On the left, Morse code, which translates to decepti, most likely meaning deception. Further left is some extremely blurred text. Investigators were unable to decipher its meaning. Perhaps this was the link to the next image. But once again, it became clear that no one would figure it out, and Old Root ended up sending out a new picture as a message. More numbers in the fog. The investigators tried their typical ideas, converting between bases in an attempt to find ASCII values. Gellis 12 stumbled upon the solution by converting from base 8 to base 16 to base 32 to ASCII, in a process which I have not personally been able to replicate. Regardless, the link to the new image was discovered. This one was quite simple. It said, good luck, and then underneath was a blurry link to the next clue. This one was not quite so easy to read. Somehow, Alamargin was able to brute force this, although Skintig received a link to the next clue. Regardless, a new image was discovered, and for the first time, there was substantial unencoded text. It read as follows, You are deeper down the rabbit hole. False prophets will deceive you. Those who are pure will see what hides in darkness. The raven is always watching. We are the answer. But what did it mean? Some of this text already made sense. Seeing what hides in darkness was probably referring to the fact that many images thus far needed to be brightened. We've also seen the final two lines in previous clues. But what about the false prophets? And why was it misspelled? It was interpreted to mean that there would be those who would post fake clues and lead people off the trail. And this did end up happening, although I will do my best to steer clear of these false prophets. Soon thereafter, Ribshark received a message linking to another image. It was a cryptic series of numbers and dots in a matrix. Using ASCII once again, false prophets will deceive you was spelled out in two directions. Yet this time, deceive was also misspelled, and the red dot was seemingly placed to point this out. The blue dots could also be connected to letters, although the meaning behind this was unclear. There simply weren't enough dots for another imager link, and to this day, we don't know exactly what Old Root was trying to say here. And for a second time, the trail went cold, and then suddenly, a huge development. Old Root posted a video on YouTube called, Quoth the Raven, Nevermore. 
Unfortunately, I cannot show you this video as it contains copyrighted music. Click the card above and watch it right now. I really think it's something you need to see. So I'll give you a second to go ahead and do that. This video is unsettling. It's just not quite right. And there's obviously a lot to talk about here. Let's start with the audio. The song played by the music disc is Tiptoe Through the Tulips With Me. Although it was written in 1929, this version is sung by Tiny Tim in 1968. What's interesting here is that Tiny Tim actually died while performing this song. He suffered a heart attack during the performance and was pronounced dead at the hospital. About a minute into the video, there's a strange rhythmic noise. If we go to the spectrogram, we can see that this is Morse code, once again spelling out Old Root. Then at the very end of the video, we hear four raven calls. Now, let's analyze the visual component. The primary footage is a Minecraft player in a cave playing the music disc. We can remove all the cuts and watch this footage together, and it aligns. The cave footage is mostly normal, although blurred. But if we pause the video right at 48 seconds and 6 frames, we can see the shadowy figure again make an appearance in the darkness. And 5 frames later, he's gone. At 53 seconds and 25 frames, we once again see the text, The Raven is Watching. But there's more to this video than just the cave. I count three or four other roles depending on how you split it up. These can also be combined on their own. The first, which I call the tunnel, is a dolly shot of an underground tunnel which we've seen in the previous pictures. But at the end of the tunnel, the camera turns and looks at a bizarre split up wood texture floating deep within the darkness. Another role is the mine shaft. This one's pretty normal with one exception. The text, he stole my face, appears for just one frame. This seems to be referencing that same mysterious character, which to this point has not had any facial features. The third role is very dark and has dust floating around, and no one has been able to find any significance here. The fourth role is the most interesting of them all. It portrays a green temple of melons with rows of seats facing a central altar. One shot shows a darkened character whose head turns slightly. To me, this is the truly unsettling part of the video. His slight motion combined with the loud noise that plays is disturbing in a very strange way. What is this place? How does it relate to the rest of the video? Nobody seemed to know. About three weeks later, user Spore the Cyan was sent a link to another image. The main text reads, Whom the Angels Name. Beneath it was more scrambled text. Attempting to use a Caesar cipher was fruitless. It turned out to be a Visionaire cipher. I won't go into the details here, but what's important to know is that it works like a Caesar cipher, except there's a code word as a key. This makes it much more challenging to break. In fact, it used to be known as the indecipherable cipher. Nowadays, there are several ways to break it. The text from the image was decoded to, you must learn the past before the future, and the key word was Lenore. The word Lenore is pretty unique. In fact, Edgar Allan Poe wrote a poem of the same name. This seemed to be an obvious connection considering that the raven had already shown up as a clue. Yet nonetheless, no one was able to learn anything new. They could not find a link to another image. There was a three month period of no new developments, and people began to wonder if this was the end of the old root mystery. Then, in December of 2014, Purple Plant received a message which said, Watching from the shadows, waiting, with such name as Nevermore. This, once again, reinforced the Edgar Allan Poe theme, as the raven says nevermore in his poem. Then Purple Plant received a second message, this time containing an image. It shows a young man, or possibly a teenager. However, his eyes are blacked out, and the image is a bit jumbled up. It says one thing. Hello, friend. Confused, Purple Plant posted this image to Twitter looking for more information. And Old Root replied with the username, We are the answer. Another clue. This time, there was more jumbled text. Beneath it was the number 6174. Upon further research, it was determined that this number was Caprecker's constant. Caprecker? Could that be the visionaire key to the text? Not quite, but a Caesar-shifted version of it was. The decoded text read, Purge yourself of your sins. Purge yourself of your desires. Purge yourself of your flesh. A few days later, Old Root tweeted out another clue. This time, it was an image from an old Italian book called La Cifra, or The Cipher, written by Giovanni Battista Bellasso. Bellasso was a cryptologist, and he's known to have invented the Visionaire Cipher before Visionaire. 
It's first described in this book. A Reddit user was able to translate the Italian text as follows. For many years since I began to work on my studies and talk with important people who are viewed with high esteem, and of the same importance as the beautiful profession of secret writing by way of those who are universally called codes, I, with the inclination given to me by nature of having no greater delight than learning, have come to continue to practice that profession, and have found in it many methods that to someone of great skill won't not like. It occurs to me that this last empty seat to find myself Lieutenant General of the illustrious and most revered Cardinal Durante in the state of Camerino. So this clue seems to confirm what we've already known. The visionary cipher was crucial for solving the puzzles, yet it didn't provide any new information. That happened on January 19th, 2015, when Oldroot tweeted a link to oldrootblog.tumblr.com. The blog was empty, save for an animated image. It said perception most of the time, but shifted to deception occasionally. And that wasn't all. Buried within the HTML file were several more interesting things. We are the divine answer. More cipher text. Perhaps most curiously was a giant block of text. Most of the characters were M, but there were a few Ds and Ns scattered about. When these are colored differently, there's a symbol that appears within the text. This is the old root logo, and it will show up again as we continue our investigation. The HTML also contained a seven-digit imager code. Upon brightening this image, we see the old root logo once again, this time in dark red. Up top, the image says, what am I? Followed by five entries and some encoded text at the bottom. These entries are easier to understand if we inspect them out of order. The second entry is Kinneret. This was another name for the Sea of Galilee, a freshwater lake in Israel. It's mentioned several times in the Bible. In fact, one such place is indicated on the image. Mark 435-41 tells the story of Jesus calming the stormy sea. The fourth entry refers to the Dutch Golden Age, a period from the late 16th century through most of the 17th century. The Dutch culture and society flourished in many ways, and one such aspect of this was art. It was a period of many Dutch masters, painting works in a wide variety of categories. One artist was Rembrandt, widely considered to be one of the period's greatest artists. There's a letter written by Rembrandt which explains what he hoped to achieve in his art. A central part of this was a word which I will not be able to pronounce, but it could be translated as the greatest and most natural movement, emotion, or motive. And what's interesting is that this word is the third entry of the clue. But it continues. One of Rembrandt's famous paintings is The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, an artistic depiction of the story from Mark IV. It's an incredibly striking painting, and I think it does a great job of depicting the greatest and most natural movement. So now we have a connection between four of the five entries, yet one remains, Fenway. How does a ballpark in Boston connect in any way to Rembrandt? Well, it turns out that the storm on the Sea of Galilee is currently missing. In 1990, two thieves performed the largest art heists in U.S. history, stealing 13 works from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. The storm was one painting that was stolen, and as of the release of this video, it is yet to be located. So what does that have to do with Fenway? Well, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is also in Boston. This means that Boston is the final known location of the storm on the Sea of Galilee. The connection is very real, and it's obvious that Old Root wanted us to find it. But we're still missing something. The encoded text in this image has yet to be solved. Later, Purple Plant received another tweet containing more ciphertext. Using a Caesar cipher shift of three, it was decoded to, if you wish to know the future, you must know the past. The clue proved to be too cryptic, and soon thereafter, the user Pepper T received a DM, obviously encoded in some way. But at this point, it could not be solved. Then Fergan Schuffner also received a DM. Although the title was a jumbled mess, the message was determined to be a bacon cipher, an extremely clever code that utilized two typefaces to embed a message. This could easily be decrypted to another imager link. This image showed a code of several boxes, some incomplete and some with symbols inside. It was quickly recognized as a pigpin cipher. The version used in this code works by drawing three tic-tac-toe squares and filling them with letters. Then each square is labeled. The first is empty, the second is X, and the third is O. From here, decoding is simple. If the symbol has X or O or empty, move to that square. Then find the corresponding location, and that's the decoded letter. Doing this for the sequence resulted in it's easier than you think, another clue that offered little in the way of progression. On April 11th, 2015, user Microphone Man was messaged by Old Root. The image said, the fun has only begun. 
When brightened, the words hidden inside were revealed. Hidden inside what, exactly? The image? It seemed obvious that there was nothing left to find after brightening the picture. Inside the letters? Again, no luck. So where could the next clue be hidden? The answer was the file itself. Using a tool such as WinRAR, the PNG file could be extracted as if it were an archive, resulting in a new image hidden within. This is very clever, and it's one of my favorite tricks that Ulroot used. The new image was another seven-digit imager code. It led to a picture with many green letters found in a wavy grid. By examining the image very closely, it was possible to transcribe these letters into plain text. The result was a block with 26 rows and 26 columns. Investigators began to discover some connections. The mysterious text on the Tumblr blog corresponded to most of the first and last row. The message sent to Pepper T existed as a square at the top left of the array. This was obviously important. 26 is the number of letters in the English language, so it seems as though it could be used for decoding messages. But at this point in time, nobody knew how it was done. A week later, Fergan Schuffner received another DM. Using a Base64 encoder, it could be translated into text, and then Caesar shifted 13 to reveal another imager link. This one was animated, and it appeared to be extremely glitchy. Nonetheless, users were able to make out the text Remember, written in a script font. After another week, a further message from Old Root was discovered. It contained two elements, some slashes with text interspersed and a code. The slashes aligned with the storm on the Sea of Galilee. This indicated that there was still something that needed to be done with that clue. But what about the second part? And then, a breakthrough. Frozen programmers solved the puzzle. By using the block of letters and the title of the painting, it was possible to decode the message in the DM. Here's the procedure. First, write out the title of the painting, The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, on line 1. Then, write out the ciphertext on line 2. The third line represents the decoded plaintext. For each letter, find that row and move right until you reach the encoded letter. Then move up vertically to find the decoded letter. Some characters don't exist on the table, such as T. In that case, no change was made from the ciphertext. Furthermore, some characters were ambiguous, such as N, which could either be a Y or a V, and F, which could be a V or a U. Because of this, decoding resulted in four possible solutions, imager followed by a code, and it was easy to check all of them. The correct solution led to the next clue. This time, it was an image with a lot of text and symbols. The letters were decoded using a Caesar shift of three. If you wish to know the future, you must know the past. Good luck. This had shown up before in a tweet sent to that purple plant. The symbols were new, however. Raiders quickly noticed that there were groups of three and that each group ended with a dot. Furthermore, there were only six possible symbols, and brightening the image showed these symbols in a certain order. Dot, dash, triangle, hourglass, box, and slash. So it was assumed that the dot represented zero, the dash one, and so on. The text was rewritten as numbers, ignoring the final dot which occurred on every group. The fact that there were only six possible characters seemed to indicate that this might be encoded in a base six numbering system. Each number was converted into decimal. Finally, they set zero to be A, one to be B, and so on, up to 25 equals Z. Using this scheme, the text was decoded. Become void of your material senses. Open your mind's eye. A few days later, Hermith received a DM with much jumbled text. The title, when shifted by three, read Shadows of the Past. The body was much more tricky. However, PTR-47 somehow discovered that the text could be split up, and each subsection could be decoded using a different base system. Doing so revealed the plain text. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This is a reference to Newton's third law of motion. Again, this clue didn't obviously lead to the next one. Old Root had to DM Torchius to get the community going again in the right direction. This time, it was another animated image which said, I'll show you. A single frame says what really happened to Old Root. A few days later, Gazarumf got a DM which said, soon. And then, it finally happened. Old Root posted to Reddit. The title could be shifted by 23 to read what really happened. 
The accompanying image flashed Become Void with a single frame reading Become Faceless instead. The tenth frame had an anomaly, a teal line across the top of the image slicing through another symbol. This seemed to be slash use slash, Reddit's code for a user. But which user? Five days later, Kende received a DM. It was an image with three different colors. Looking at the hex value revealed these numbers to be 280000, 00F600, and 0000B9. The aggregate of these numbers was 28F6B9. Could this be the mysterious Reddit user from the previous clue? Such a user did exist and made a single comment on an old Minecraft post. Isn't it interesting how things aren't always what they seem? Combining the obvious typos result in another imager link. When brightened it says, can anyone hear me? Following the next imager code revealed even more text. The brightened image includes something happened, I'll show you, mindset, ARG, another code and more numbers. There's a reddit user named after the code with a single post. Using a shift of seven it could be decoded to say, back to the origins, craft, the world stone origins. However, this is widely believed to be fake, and a DM to Old Root asking if it was real all but confirmed this as he responded, false prophets will deceive you. Once again, the investigators had reached a dead end. It didn't last long, however, as Unclear Seer was sent a link to another image. It included several numbers. Redditors discovered that each of the white numbers corresponded to the atomic mass of an element, including zirconium, lithium, beryllium, neon, and argon. The meaning of the red numbers was still unknown. Behind the numbers was a dark and stretched out code linking to the next image. And this next one is one of the stranger pictures. An extremely washed out image shows a darkened figure in the corner of a room. The bottom text appears to say shadows of the past. Closer inspection reveals text scattered throughout the room, including the Raven watches and several other smaller chunks such as T2 or N. Here's where the story takes a bit of an interesting turn. A user was exploring a server called Zedwork and stumbled upon something quite startling, the Melon Temple from Old Root's YouTube video. By asking around, it turned out that Old Root himself was on this server within the past week. Players explored and found several unique signs and landmarks. It was unknown if Old Root had placed these or if it was another false prophet. Several search parties were sent to explore the server. Their findings are recorded on a Google Drive folder. The Zedwork server made things a bit trickier. How connected was this server to the puzzle? Were there actually any clues there? That question was answered on July 9th of 2015, when Gazaroom received a DM from Old Root. This image, when brightened, included three numbers at the bottom, X, Y, Z coordinates. In the nether of the Zedwork server, there was a sign located here, leading to another imager code. There's a lot going on in this picture. The numbers on the right side correspond to atomic masses, this time of phosphorus, tin, and ruthenium. A text to numeral code was implied up top, and there are several entries crossed out. The top right included another imager link, the next clue. It appears to be written on parchment. In my investigations, I have come across many things that I have yet to explain. In order to understand the mystery, I first have to… and then it cut off. Brightening the image revealed nothing. Again, a dead end. Olderoot bailed out the investigators once more with another DM. Somehow, this was brute forced into an imager code. I'm not totally sure how they did it since the post describing it is missing. Nonetheless, a new image was discovered. He won't be able to see, hear, or communicate. He'll be practically brain dead. Then there was a link to another imager picture. The shadowy figure from before appears again. Although the text is broken up, it wasn't too difficult to decipher it. Who is Old Root? Why is he doing this? What is the Raven? I'll show you. But Old Root would not show us until November 20th, 2015 with the DM de Gazamin. The Old Root symbol made another appearance, engraved in a sea of red text. This text has issues though. Subtle typos interspersed throughout. Putting these typos in order revealed the next clue. Well, what to do with this one? You think you can give us a new clue? Four numbers? What did this have to do with anything? And once again, the community had no choice but to wait for another morsel of help from Old Root. That morsel did not arrive until January 16th, 2016, when We Are The Answer tweeted out an image. It's a death certificate for a male person named Wester Allen. The cause of death is written as paralysis agitans, another name for Parkinson's disease. But on top of that is red 
printed text which reads falsification. This implies that, for whatever reason, this death certificate is invalid. Wester Allen died for a different reason. A few months later, Horderlock received a link to another image. It says, you're getting closer on the top and bottom. The jumbled up text in the center is harder to decipher, but it appears to say oldroot.tumblr.com. Hidden in the blog was a template for a web address. Soon thereafter, a new image was found in the blog. Horderlock recognized the text to be something written by his alt account. Old Root had obviously done some digging on the people investigating the puzzle. And then another image was discovered. This one was extremely similar to the first one of the darkened figure, and it did confirm that the text said shadows of the past. Even so, people were unable to find the key to the next clue. Nowadays, this image is typically considered to be yet another dead end. On March 26, 2016, Old Root posted another video to YouTube, simply called Five. Let's watch it. There are two voices, the clear text and the distorted text. During the conversation, it becomes obvious that the clear text is intended to be Wester, the person from the death certificate. The mysterious voice says that Wester can do so much more than simply listen. Then there are an extremely rapid sequence of images, all of which include the old root logo. The first two are not interesting. The third, however, seems to show images of a shell, as well as the words become void. The following frame is more mysterious. There are several images of a family portrait, but the parents have their faces scribbled out. The son appears to have no face whatsoever. Could this be the mysterious faceless person represented by the Minecraft character? Additionally, there's some encrypted text, which decodes to before the madness when shifted by 13. The next two frames simply show the old root logo disappearing. This video appears to make some sort of connection between the previous clues, and it continues on with some similar themes, but it didn't tell the investigators where to go next, and the puzzle stalled for three months, until Horderlock was DM'd by Old Root once more. It was a bunch of numbers with some stars. An observant Redditor noticed that the second row appeared to be digits of pi. Upon further investigation, all of the rows were parts of pi. By filling in the missing numbers, an ASCII string was created, the link to the next clue. The sequence of numbers was chaotic at first. They weren't even aligned vertically. But then someone suggested that the layout was similar to a keyboard, and sure enough, seven more digits were found. Although the capitalization was unknown, investigators were nonetheless able to link to the next clue. It appeared to be an extended version of a previously discovered image, now adding, I realize that this is difficult to hear. Another image or link was on the right side. Again, more cipher text, this time reading, if you want to know the future, you must know the past, a phrase which had already been discovered. But what about the numbers? I'm actually not totally sure what they did, sources are limited. However, I do know that Redditors were able to somehow find the link to the next image using this code. This appears to be pretty simple, just two circles. Brightening it reveals the old root logo with some text. Unfinished. An author lies dead. An author unknown. Remaining unread. Remaining untold. And that's actually it. A few months later, Old Root posted himself on Reddit. In his post, he announced that he would no longer be adding on to the project. He reflected upon the puzzles and talks about how he wanted to create codes that couldn't be easily cracked. Old Root talked about how needing to DM people cryptic hints devalue the project. The solution, he said, could be found without him doing anything. Nonetheless, he expressed his doubt that a complete solution would ever be discovered. We now know that Old Root is Alex Bale, who has a YouTube channel. He actually commented on my Minecraft Iceberg video, so in retrospect, it's pretty cool to see that there was a real person behind the puzzle. So what do we do now? I think it's worthwhile for me to express my thoughts on this, having researched it over the past several weeks. I thought that the main idea behind Old Root was really cool, the chain of connections from one image to the next. Modern art takes many forms, and Old Root is really at its best when this is happening. However, as time continued, I felt that the story seriously lost its focus and ended up being a constant waiting game, looking for the next clue to be DM'd to somebody. This hurt the overall continuity, and I get the sense that Old Root feels the same way from his Reddit post. 
Things work best when there was a clear link from one image to the next, and near the end that became rarer and rarer. But just because the link wasn't discovered doesn't mean that the link wasn't there. And in the process of researching this video, there are some things that I still don't understand, some questions which might lead to new ideas. First, why does this image have a border? Is there information hidden there, perhaps some sort of code? Can we analyze the difference between the gradients to possibly learn something new? And what about the first video posted to YouTube? That URL seems pretty unconventional. Is it possible that there's something to it? We also never discovered the meaning behind several misspellings found throughout the story. Furthermore, there are some cases where letters are missing spaces. Why is it constructed this way? Another question I picked up in editing is why is there such variation in aspect ratios? The first several images are the same, but then suddenly they start changing. Does this have a meaning? Also, why is this image a JPEG when everything else is a PNG file? If this truly is solvable, then the small details matter. Old Root told us at least four times that if you wish to know the future, you must know the past. There are things missing from previous images. One of the purposes of this video was to get everything all in one place. Hopefully this makes it easier for the community to make connections and progress on the puzzle. There's some deeper analysis that I would like to do on my own, but I felt that this was not the correct video for that. Instead, I wanted to give the community a solid roadmap of the story so far. So I encourage you, whoever's watching this, do some research for yourself. It's likely that I missed a clue somewhere in there, and all it takes is one person to make the right connection. The solution is out there. Will we ever completely solve it? The only way to know is to try. As always, I encourage you to join the Retro Gaming Now Discord. Have you found something new? Come talk about it here. It's a great place to spitball some ideas, and maybe we'll eventually discover something. I'm going to do my best to put all my findings into a document, and I'll update the description of this video so you can see it all in one place. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a bit different than what I typically do, but I think this is a topic worth exploring. As always, I love reading your comments, so let me know what you think. We'll go ahead and end with that. This has been Retro Gaming Now, and I'll see you all in the next video.